in this particular video looking at the vibration zero point energy this actually builds on various concepts within quantum where we also explored that of particle in a box and also that of the harmonic oscillator now in terms of the particle in a box we recognize that when a particle is in a particular barrier there are possible energy levels or states that a particular molecule can actually exist at like for example n equals zero so n equals one and so on and then this particular molecule being let's say a diatomic molecule can behave like an oscillator where it goes back and forth and maintaining a particular bond distance right there now what they recognize is that this actually makes the harmonic oscillator to have a zero point energy correction where we see that this particular zero or this ground state actually has a zero point energy correction where this correction is based on this particular formula which is en equals to n plus half multiplied by Planck constant multiplied by the angular frequency where the angular frequency is equal to the square root of the force constant divided by mu where mu is actually the reduced mass of this particular diatomic molecule so what that results in is where n equals to zero which is the ground state they recognize that the ground state which is e0 is actually this particular value where h is actually the Planck constant and w here is the angular frequency now this actually proves that the zero point energy it is non-zero and it is a positive value now building on this particular concept what they recognize is that oh the vibrational zero point energy however has significant implications like for example starting off with the bond dissociation energy analysis we recognize that the bond dissociation energies is actually understood to be the energy required to break a particular bond in any particular molecule so if you have a molecule here and we have a target bond right here the energy required to break this bond and form two radicals in here actually is most likely an endothermic process which means that it requires energy for this process to actually occur now for the sake of this particular video where we're going to be looking at a particular coordinate diagram which is called i would say the internuclear distance relationship with that of the energy what we see is that a particular path is actually created while you're about to break that particular bond and in this particular path here is where you actually automatically break the bond and here is the equilibrium distance which is r naught so in this particular path here what we see is that oh wait a minute there is a ground state in the quantum realm where there is a value where n equals zero and there's also a classical value right here and this classical value which is at the bottom distance from this particular quantum level actually gives us a unique value which is called the zero point energy so this gap right here is actually called the zero point energy of any molecule and this value is actually unique like for example hydrogen gas we actually have a zero point energy that is 6.5 and it is completely different from let's say for example its own isotope which is d2 which is actually 
deuterium where deuterium has two ma mass number of two where one is actually the neutron and the other is the proton now this other energy gap right here which is the top here to this particular n equals zero is actually called the experimental dissociation energy and this value for hydrogen gas in terms of the experimental dissociation energy is actually 103.2 kilocals per mole now what they recognize is that comparing hydrogen gas with that of its isotope which is deuterium they recognize that deuterium is denser of course than that of hydrogen gas due to this particular nuclei weight of deuterium compared to that of hydrogen which just has one proton in there so what that implies is that with respect to d2 d2 would have a lower zero point energy than that of hydrogen gas so what that implies is that zero point energy is actually a quantum effect and this quantum effect works well for lighter molecules which in this case is actually hydrogen gas compared to heavier molecule which in this case is deuterium now this actually also adds to the second implication which is called the kinetic isotopic effect and this is actually pretty much done experimentally when we are comparing atoms from or elements with different isotopes like what we did before where we compared hydrogen with that of deuterium and looking at this in a particular hydrogenation reaction where we have a particular catalyst in here and I'm going to draw this it's going to take a while to actually get this out of the way this catalyst right here then acts on this particular molecule and either in the presence of hydrogen gas or deuterium gas we actually form which are actually positioning the two isotopes in the same direction but what they recognize is that oh interesting that this is happening but what they realized is that hydrogen rate of reaction is completely different from that of deuterium and from this particular observation they realized that there has to be a quantum effect happening in here that is resulting in difference in this particular reaction rates of deuterium acting on a thing compared to that of hydrogen gas acting on ethane and when they dove into the internuclear energy gap or internuclear distance with respect to the energy what they saw is that deuterium would result in less tunneling so in this particular case since deuterium is heavier then it will be able it will have less tunneling effect which is tunneling means passing through the energy barrier right here to make it to this particular product end which is the formation of this because of what the energy barrier which is the bond zero point energy of deuterium here is actually affecting the energy gap of deuterium so more energy here is required for deuterium therefore affecting the tunneling ability of it since deuterium is heavier than that of hydrogen which has 
a higher bond dissociation or zero point energy than that of deuterium as a result since it is lighter it will have less energy and this le less dissociation energy results in more of the products being formed for hydrogen compared to that of deuterium product right there so that's about it for this particular video i hope you're able to understand this please hit the comment down below let me hear your thought about this and many more and see you all on my next video stay smart and believe in yourself